Hello. In this video, I'm going to go over a cool application of complex valued functions to probability. Specifically, we're going to look at probability generating functions through the context of a specific example uh, and problem, which I'll introduce later. And um, don't worry if you're not familiar with complex numbers. Um, you should still be able to follow most of this video and get the key, uh, still understand the key points. So if we have a random variable x, which represents the result of rolling a six-sided dice, the traditional way to lay this out might be in a probability table such as this. So um, the probability of rolling a six is one over six, five is also one over six, and so, down, uh, so on down to one is also one over six. And um, we're now going to introduce a seemingly useless idea that turns out to be quite useful, and that is a probability gener generating function, specifically gx of z. And we use z because later on we might be something with complex numbers. Um, and here, the coefficients of each uh, power of z, uh, z represents the probability of rolling that power on the dice. So the probability of rolling a 6 is 1 over 6. The probability of rolling a uh, 5 is also 1 over 6. 4, also 1 over 6. So on down to 1, 1 over 6. Uh, and we can factor out 1 over 6, of course, which might make things a little easier later on. So now we need to introduce the random variable y, which is the result of rolling two six-sided dice, fair six-sided dice, and adding their values together. So y equals x plus x. And the traditional way to work this out might be with a sample space diagram such as this. So here, this represents the result of, say, the first dice and the second. And then we uh, we add them up to get the results of uh, y, the value of y. So let's say we roll a four on the first dice and three on the second, we'd get seven. And we can see that there are also many other ways of getting seven. And uh, we can then lay this out in a table once again. And uh, the distribution is no longer uniform. So prob the probability of rolling a one is zero out of 36. We can't do it. For two, it's one out of 36. Three, two out of 36. Up to seven, which is six out of 36, the most common outcome. And back down to 12, which is one over 36 again. Um, and we're now going to return to this idea of the probability generating function and define gy of z. And it turns out we can actually define this as gx of z times gx of z. Um, and we can do the multiplication, and this is where it might be helpful to factor again, because we can keep the 1, out of 30, 1 over 36 factored and it just makes algebra a bit neater. But we get that the probability, if we were to um, expand this back in, we get that the probability of rolling a 2 is 1 over 36. The probability of rolling a 3 is 2 over 36. For rolling a 4 is 3 over 36. Up to 7, 6 over 36. And once again, back down to 12, it's just 1 over 36 again. Okay, so now I'm going to start to look at um, a, a specific problem. Um, we'll let the random variables P and Q uh, be the result of two possibly differently biased six sided dices. So, no longer is it true that the probability of rolling a 6 is the same as rolling, say, a 3. Uh, P of 6 and P of 3 don't have to be equal. And also, it's the same thing for Q. And Q of 3 and P of 3, say, don't have to be equal. Um, these are two different distributions. They could be the same, but they can also be different. Well, I'm going to let the random variable W be the result of rolling the two bias dice and adding their results. So W equals P add Q. What we want to know is, is it possible to find distributions for P and Q such that W is uniform? If so, what are these distributions? So what we're saying is, can we find distributions for P and Q such that the probability that W equals R equals 1 over 11, but all 2 less than or equal to R less than or equal to 12? Um, and it would be 1 over 11 because there are 11 possible outcomes between 2 and 12. And we want them all to be equally likely, so 1 over 11. Now, the naive way to approach this problem might be to um, lay out the probabilities of W in a table again like this. So the probability that W equals 2 is P1Q1, 3 is P1Q2, plus P2Q1, and so on up to 7, which is P1Q6, plus P2Q5, and all the way up to P6Q1, which is um, quite a lot. And uh, When you lay this out in simultaneous equations like this, you'll have 11 equations. And it, it is possible to solve it like this. In fact, when I first saw this problem, uh, I did solve it in a method that started out like this. It's just, it's not fun. 
It's very tedious. It's long. And there is an easier way, which we're going to go over now. And it uses our old friends of the probability generating function. So we'll define GP of Z uh, as P1Z plus P2Z uh, squared plus P3Z cubed, all the way up to P6Z6. And similarly, GQ of Z. Uh, and these probability generating functions are going to make uh, looking at this problem and working to a solution much, much easier. So we can now define GWZ, and we can find this as GP of Z times GQ of Z, just like our example earlier on. And um, we can multiply this out and we'd get what we'd expect, the, the coefficients of each um, power of Z representing the probability of obtaining that value. But it's, it's actually much easier to keep it factorised like this. So we, we will. We can now redefine our problem in terms of these generating functions. What we want to do is find the coefficients P1, Q, uh, P2 up to P6, and similarly for Q, um, 1 through 6, such that GW over Z is equal to 1 over 11Z squared, plus 1 over 11Z cubed, plus 1 over 11Z4, plus 1 over 11Z5, up to 1 over 11z12. So this means gpz times gq of z must equal 1 over 11z squared through to 1 over 11z12. And this means that our, our two brackets from earlier must equal uh, this expression, one, uh, the 1 over 11z squared expression. And when we've got functions like this, there's a few things we can do, one of which is look at the roots. So we're going to set gw of z equal to 0. And this is where it's helpful to have not expanded earlier because we've got our two brackets already partially factorised, equal to zero. And it turns out we can take uh, out another factor of z squared. So z squared equals uh, zero, so z equals zero. So there's two z equals zero roots. Or this bracket is equal to zero. Or this bracket is equal to zero. So because these are both polynomials with, uh, of the fifth degree, we know that they must cross the x-axis once. Therefore, each of these two brackets must have at least one real root. So add to the two from earlier, from the z squared equals zero. And we know that gw of z equals zero has at least four real roots. And this is a very useful fact. We can now look at the one over 11z squared through to one over 11z12 expression. And we can start to simplify it. We can factor out one over 11. And we can also factor out the z squared, just like before. And it then turns out that this uh, great long um, expression here, the one plus z plus z squared, plus z cubed, plus z4. Well, you might recognize this as a geometric series. And you know that we'll be able to simplify it down to this. Uh, z to the power of 12 minus 1 over z minus 1. And this is very useful. Because now, when we look at its roots, well, we, we've got this equal to 0. And we know that z squared equals 0, meaning that z equals 0. Um, we've got this 2 z equals 0 roots once again. Or z12 minus 1 over z minus 1 equals 0. So looking at the roots of z12 minus 1 equals 0, if you're uh, a bit familiar with complex numbers, you might know that these are going to be the 12 roots of unity. That is, 12 points on the unit circle in the complex plane equally spaced uh, around. So here we've got 1, here's minus 1, here's i, and here's negative i. And we've also got some other complex uh, roots around here as well. Uh, and you can see that we've got two real roots here, one over there and one over there. The rest are all complex. So we can then look at the roots of z uh, to the power 12 minus 1 over z minus 1 equals 0. And dividing by this z minus 1 here actually removes the z equals 1 root. So we've lost one of our real roots. We've still got minus 1, but we no longer have this z equals 1 solution. So... This means that 1 over 11z squared plus 1 over 11z cubed, all about 1 over 11z to the 12 equals 0, has three real roots. However, we've already seen that gw of z equals 0 has at least four real roots. As such, it is not possible to find values for p1 through p6 and q1 through q6, such that the coefficients of gw of z are all 1 over 11. This means that it is not possible to have two biased dice such that the distribution of the results of rolling them and adding their values is uniform, solving our original problem. Okay, I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.